Good morning all, it's post bag. I do like the yellow ones. So let's open it. This one's from Zoo. Let's see what Zoo has sent me. Hmm. Right, this one is an OLED. It's one of these um, 128 by 32 OLED. So it's a four by one uh, ratio, aspect ratio. Uh, VCC ground, actually ground VCC, SCL and SDA, but I seem to have two of those and I don't remember buying two. Better take a look at my eBay listing. And this one is an INA219. This is the uh, little current sensor module. Let's get in closer. So yes, these are two, and I did buy two, of these little uh, 128 by 32 OLEDs, they're I squared C, so you've got ground, VCC, SCL, SDA. Now it says they're 0.91 inch, uh, so I presume that's the diagonal because the 128 by 64 is 0.96 inch, if I remember correctly, so possibly they're the same uh, pixel size, pixel resolution, I suppose you'd say. Now it says on the eBay listing that these are 3.3 volt or 5 volt compatible. Um, there's a little uh, V2 on there or a U2. Be interesting to see what that is. I mean, it might well be a regulator. Uh, well, it's quite hard to see, so I'm trying to use a torch and a magnifying glass in combination with each other, but I think that says 662K on it. Yes, it does. So let's take a quick look at that. Yes, so uh, a simple Google search would, uh, would it would appear that that is a 3.3 volt regulator. Uh, there's the 662K, and there's V in 5 volts or more, and V out 3.3 volts. Now, does the SSD 1306 uh, have 5 volt tolerant uh, inputs for SCL and SDA? Uh, I have to try and find that in this data sheet. It says uh, VDD is 1.65 to 3.3 for IC logic. There's also VCC, 7 to 15 volts for panel driving. So I'm not sure how that's being generated. Right, DC characteristics, uh, VDD logic supply voltage, 1.65 to 3.3. Uh, high logic input level, the minimum is 0.8 VDD. But there's no maximum given. So I don't know whether this chip uh, has five volt tolerant uh, I squared C lines. Now on my hygrometer project, I mounted the OLED uh, sort of with the uh, Arduino sitting across it by putting on a little connector here and that connects to there. But this OLED's the other way around. The connector is on the side. So is there a way I could mount that onto an Arduino Pro Mini uh, elegantly? Well, these Pro Minis are all different. Um, this one, now you need to leave the um, programming header clear, really. But this one has a ground at this end and A6 and A7. This one doesn't have anything at this end because it has a switch. But this one has a V and a ground and an A7 and an A6. So I suppose I could use the VCC and the ground uh, with this mounted across it like that, somehow get ground and VCC connected to these two pins. Actually, that might work if that were switched over that way because uh, V and G, oh no, G and V. Um, it doesn't quite work, does it? But then I'd have to pick up uh, A4 and A5 for SCL and SDA, and they're over here. But that could be done, I suppose, by running a couple of wires over to a suitable connector. It might be possible to mount that on a Pro Mini. Hmm, interesting. Now the INA219, uh, I got one of those in recently, but on a slightly different shape board. Now they both have six pins at the bottom, uh, VCC ground and the I squared C pins. They also have V in minus and V in plus, uh, which are the current measurement points. They're just duplicates of these two points up here, which go directly to the resistor. The difference with the purple board is it has the more standard, um, I think that's probably two tenths of an inch pitch connector. This has a miniature uh, power or high current connector, which might be a bit awkward 
uh, in terms of things like wire thickness and even the pitch between the two pins. So uh, yes, there are two different types. So here's the uh, OLED on eBay. Uh, this one is a 0.91 inch IIC, I2C. Uh, now it does say serial SPI OLED LCD display. There is an option for SPI, it's that. So it's a very different form factor. It has the pins across the top, uh, but I went for the I squared C, which has the pins down the side. $3.40. Uh, I bought two of these, I think. But are they 340 each? Yeah, I think they're 340 each, uh, free shipping. And these came from Chivazu. Oh, my computer's running slow. And the INA219 uh, is an I2C bi directional current power monitor power supply detect sensor. Just $2.10, free shipping, also from Chivazu. Right, next is this one. Now, I've already opened this because I wanted to see what it was. Uh, this came from a UK seller. And it's a microchip pick. Um, it's actually the 12F1501. Uh, well, there's not much to see here. Um, it is indeed a 12F1501 pick. Uh, what does it say here? It says 20 megahertz. Now, that's probably the crystal frequency. I've got a feeling this can run quite fast using the internal RC oscillator as well. Uh, doesn't say anything else there. So let's take a look at microchip's website. Uh, okay, so microchip.com. Now, microchip making a big thing, of course, about the fact that they now have PIC and AVR MCUs, microchip having bought Atmel. Uh, so there's some stuff here on 8-bit AVR and PIC MCUs, and uh, the timelines for both of those different uh, microcontroller architectures. Okay, so let's go through to uh, all 8-bit PIC MCUs. Uh, so you can see here that the uh, PIC 12F1501 uh, has 1.75K program, 64 RAM. But the thing that interested me, uh, here's the max clock speed uh, in megahertz, 20 megahertz. That's with a crystal. But the internal oscillator can run at 16 megahertz. Now that's twice the speed of the 683 that I'm using in my NeoPixel experiments and four times the speed of the uh, PIC 12F675, which is on the little demo board. So yeah, here's the uh, PIC 12F675 in one of these demo boards. That's the one that's still got the uh, JST connector. The other one, which I'm playing with at the moment, let's just switch that on. This is using the 12F683 that has an 8 megahertz uh, internal oscillator. And I found, and this is a sneak preview of uh, some linear feedback shift register stuff, which I'm playing with. I found that this one, if you wind the uh, 8 megahertz oscillator up to its maximum frequency, it's actually fine. You can do pretty much anything you want, uh, NeoPixel wise. It's it's working absolutely great. Uh, so this is the one I bought: MCU 8-bit PIC12, 20 megahertz, DIP8, MPN. Uh, PIC12F1501 IP. IP means plastic. Uh, the I in line is it? I think, but the P is plastic. Microchip. At $2.12 just for the one chip. I'm not sure whether that's expensive or not. I think it is quite expensive, actually. But that was with free shipping. And, of course, shipping in the UK is not anything like free. And that came from Top Quality Tools. OK, next up is this one. Now I'm trying to cheat and see what this is. Ah, yeah, look, there's a module in there. And it's got four large holes. I think I know what that is. Let's open it. I think it's the ideal diode because that had uh, two input holes and two output holes. Yes, that is the fourth of the uh, ideal diodes that I bought. So I'll dig the others out now. Right, here it is. Um, it's got two MOSFETs. It looks like the drains are in uh, connected together and to the in connection. Sources are connected together and go to out positive, and then here's ground uh, or negative. Now, the controller chip has been scraped, which is very interesting because I did some research on this before it turned up. Uh, you can see the MOSFET numbers are D4185, and by using uh, enhancements on the photo of this device, I managed to get a number off this chip and work out what it was. I'm going to have to go back through that again now because I assume that chip would be readable. 
Uh, yes, here's a photograph I took off eBay and I did some tweaking of contrast and brightness and managed to get this which I think says LTA2. So let's do a search for LTA2 and uh, yeah this is it, it's a 6 pin SOT23 and you can see here that it says the part marking is LTA2 so I know this is the right device and it is uh, a linear technology LTC 4412 uh, it's called a low loss power path controller in thin SOT um, but you can see very low loss replacement for power supply oaring diodes so it doesn't actually say ideal diode but yeah that's what it is oh okay yeah it does say uh, it actually in the description it says uh, controls an external p-channel MOSFET well in this case there's two on that board in parallel to create a near ideal diode function for power switchover or load sharing so I'm hoping it'll be uh, ideal for what I want uh, just briefly then the other ones this was the one with four MOSFETs uh, which are facing each other so one, one pair point one way and one pair point the other this has an identifiable controller it's another LT linear technology chip and it has this on off control but this was about ten dollars I've got a feeling this one that I've just received was about four and a half or something and then these are the ones that I don't think have a, a special purpose controller chip I've got a funny feeling that that scraped device is an op amp but I would need to look into that further and then I'll come back and do a video on ideal diodes but yeah I think this one's looking favorable so this is the item on eBay. Now the description of this is just completely bizarre. It says 15 amp diode, solar, the counter-attack filling and charging protection from Irrigat. So if you can make head and a tail of that, then uh, good for you. Uh, this one is $4.49, free shipping, and it came from Xinyang Shi. Right, next, this one, and it's pretty fat. So uh, let's take a look. Got a feeling I recognise the form factor of this. Okay, I'll unwrap it. And it's this. Um, it's a buck converter. It's a synchronous buck converter. You can see the two uh, MOSFETs there. The input, I think, is up to 60 volts. It's one of these high voltage ones. It's got a linear technology uh, synchronous buck converter controller chip there. And the output is four USBs. It's a bit of an oddity. Um, now I've got a feeling it uses the same chip as the synchronous buck converter which I blew up recently. Let's have a look. Yes, um, this was the synchronous buck converter, supposedly 60 volts in and, um, oh I don't know, I think it was up to 30 volts out. And I wound the pot fully clockwise and it blew up. Um, and it is the same chip, it's the Linear Technology LT3800. Now the advantage on this one is that there's no pot, it's fixed 5 volts. So I can't blow this up by winding the pot fully clockwise. Uh, interestingly it's got uh, a 2.1 mil connector there so I could connect it directly to my solar power system right now. I think I'm going to check on eBay what the um, input minimum and maximums are before I do that. But yeah, I might be able to get 5 volts out of that right this moment. And uh, it's this thing here, it's uh, a DC to DC, 7 to 60 volts on the input. Well that's good, I can put my solar power, which is ooh, only 12.2 today. It's very dull today, that's why I'm using artificial light. Um, to 5 volt, 5 amp, 4 USBs output. Is there a terminal block for the output? No there isn't, there's a terminal block for the input, but uh, USB only on the output. But convert to step down power supply module, uh, $8.48, free shipping. And I got it from Quail Lao Liang, which is the seller uh, that also supplied the one that I blew up. So uh, let's see how I'm going to blow this one up. Right, my solar power system is currently driving the uh, overhead light, so that's going to go out when I pull the plug. So we're back to daylight now. Now this has to be centre positive. Um, it does look like it because the pin does not connect to the ground plane, so that's going to work fine. Yeah, that does work fine. Now what have I got that um, takes 5 volts? Oh, I know. Uh, it's my PIC NeoPixel project. So let's plug that in there. Oh, yeah, that seems to work fine. And this is quite a neat little module really. I like the fact that it's enclosed in 
acrylic. I might actually end up using this quite a lot just as a very quick um, solar power to 5 volt, fairly high current 5 volt, more than one output 5 volt. Yeah, I'm quite liking this actually. Uh, let's just quickly check uh, how much current I can pull out of it. So let's put a thing in on one amp and that's sitting at 4.9, switch to two amps. Okay, the uh, voltage has dropped to 4.89. Well, that's still kind of 4.9, isn't it? What was it on one amp? Oh, 4.96 drops to 4.86 when drawing two amps. Hmm, I've got another one of these. No, oh, I can smell those resistors. They're getting quite hot. It's, uh, oh yeah, they're quite uh, nicely warm. Right, so I've got another one of these. So let's plug that into another uh, connector. Uh, oh, that's on two amps. Let's put that on one. Right, so I'm now drawing two amps. Now the maximum current this thing said it could supply is five amps. So let's go two amps on this one, two amps on this one. Oh, that's still holding up reasonably well. Oh no, that one's rebooted. Why did that happen? Maybe it's a bad connection. Oh, it's a bad connection there. Okay, I'm moving that to another plug. No, it seems to be rebooting, didn't it? But anyway, um, oh, that's lost its display screen setting. I wanted the big font setting. That one. Yes, I mean, it seems to be holding up reasonably well, except that keeps rebooting. Why is it doing that? This is getting very hot and smelly here because I'm putting two amps through each of these uh, resistive loads. But this thing does seem to be holding up. Not quite sure what's going on with that red thing there. I want to check whether anything, oh, I can't check whether anything's getting hot because I can't get my fingers inside the acrylic. Mm, no, there's no warmth coming up off there. And I wouldn't be able to tell anyway because there's so much heat coming off these resistors. But yeah, I think that's a pretty neat device. And uh, probably finally for today, this one, it's in a box. Uh, it's been marked gift and the quantity and detailed description is gift. All right, let's, uh, let's see what's inside here. I can still smell those resistors. They must have got very hot. What is this? Why would they put that, which is an OLED, in a huge great box? Weird. Okay, there's not much to say about this really. It's just um, an OLED. It's one of these 0.96 inch, uh, 1285 by 64. Now it's identical pretty much, well, slight differences, to the one that I used on my hygrometer project. And uh, I'll just get a bit closer. And uh, these I bought simply for their pin arrangement, VCC ground SCL SDA, which matches these humidity sensors. Uh, they're called VIN ground SCL SDA, which meant that I could attach the humidity sensor directly to the front of the OLED. So I've just got another one of these in. Um, I think this one was taking a long time to arrive. So I ordered a second one just to make sure I got it. So this is a uh, white zero. Actually, the other one I bought it said it was white and it wasn't, it turned out to be blue. So it'd be interesting to see whether this is actually white. Uh, 0.96 inch I squared C serial, 128 by 64 OLED, not an LCD, not an LED, oh, it is an LED sort of. Display module Arduino, uh, US dollars 351. That's not a bad price, is it, for that OLED? I've got a feeling that was the cheapest one I could find. Uh, free shipping and this one came from Horizon Electronic. Right, should we do one more then? Because this one's been hanging around for quite a while. Um, just haven't got around to opening it. And it is covered in foam. It's a solar charge controller of the CMP12 form factor, but with an LCD display. Uh, so here's one of my CMP12 stroke 24s, uh, 12 or 24 volts. This one probably will be as well. This one's obviously been in the garden. Oh, I've got a feeling this was on my 30 watt uh, garden solar light. And so it had been out there for probably several months, uh, but survived. And then I put the other one on with the timer because I felt that was a better solution. 
Uh, so let's have a look at this. Is it the same form factor? Ah, it looks very similar. Uh, yeah, identical uh, size case. Um, there are a couple of additions. This one's got a power switch. Not sure why you'd want a power switch. Uh, it's also got the rather pointless 5 volt 2 amp USB connector. It's good that it's 2 amp, I suppose, but why do you want USB on a solar charge controller? It's a bit weird. Um, otherwise, yes, they're all very similar. Oh, of course, the main difference being the uh, LCD. There's a bit of muck in there, and that's causing static on the display. I wonder if that peels off and I can get that bit of muck out. Well, that's not quite what I wanted to happen, but yeah, it does peel off, and that bit of muck will come out. But uh, yeah, that's just bits of plastic, I think, from when this was manufactured. There's the switch, there's the liquid crystal display. Um, now I could do one of two things in this post bag video. I can either power this up or open it up. I think I might power it up actually. Now this says it needs the type of battery that has, uh, that's kind of square with two sticky uppy things. Oh yeah, I've got one of those. Uh, 12 volt lead acid of course. So let's connect that to these center two connections to power the display up. Uh, right, I think that's right. Positrons go there, uh, negatrons go on that side. Yeah, so let's connect that to the battery. I'm not sure how well charged this is. I don't think it very, is very well charged. But that's powered up. I don't seem to have needed to press power. Maybe that's actually a load control switch. Yeah, it is a load control switch. You can see that because a little load symbol is coming on. Oh, and a little arrow pointing from the battery to a lamp. Perhaps I should have a lamp. Uh, 18.9, sorry, 11.9 volts is the current battery voltage. And I guess if you hooked up a solar panel, uh, this would then show a solar panel symbol with an arrow pointing to the battery. But yeah, that's just a load on off switch. Oh, I wonder if this uh, USB socket works. So it's the Neo Pixel ring again. Let's plug that in. Oh, it's one of those really horrible... USB sockets, that didn't feel good at all. Oh, but that works. Switch the load on, that comes on. Switch it off, it goes off. Yeah, so uh, the USB socket works, even if it feels a bit uh, nasty, but that works. But so uh, yeah, I think even just having the voltage on there is quite a nice addition um, over the original unit. I quite like that. And I'm not really gonna do much with this uh, probably until next spring. Uh, so then we'll take a look at it in more detail. Uh, I didn't seem to do a lot more than the standard solar controller. Uh, possibly it might be pulse width modulation, whereas I don't think these ones were. I think these were simple uh, high and low level switches. But yeah, we'll take a look at that um, in a while. Okay, let's have a look at it on eBay. Right, this is it. Um, it's, it says now it does not ship to the United Kingdom. It must have done when I bought it, which was a little while ago. Um, there are two types, 20 amp or 10 amp. I bought the 10 amp, which was $11.84. I think it was free shipping, TomTop UK. Uh, what's the 20 amp one? Yeah, a couple of dollars more, but the one I bought was 10 amp. And so these are today's post bag items. Mum, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to blow up synchronous book converter because you never managed it. Look, stop that. I don't want to blow this one up. This one's quite nice. Right, on with the robot kit build. Now, this bit looks a bit tricky. Uh, I have to get this motor shell. And then the motor needs to be pushed into there. But it says don't trap the wires. O is non-trapped wires. X is trapped wires. I think I'll go for O. Wires that aren't trapped. This is difficult. Oh, there's a little clip there. That's interesting. So that motor goes down inside there. And then presumably... Oh, that didn't sound good. And I think I just pushed the uh, pinion down on its shaft a little bit. But that doesn't seem to sit behind that clip. Not quite sure why not. 
Well, evidently it should sit uh, under that clip. So I think a bit of brute force is required here to push this motor down so that it goes under that clip. Has it gone in? I mean, that's never coming out again. But yeah, those wires are free. They're not trapped. The motor is now hmm, under the clip, I think. Let's get the big torch. Uh, definitely not enough sunlight today to make this motor spin, but big torch should do it. Oh yeah, that's still working fine. So there is hope for this kit still. So, hope you enjoyed the video. A couple more up here which you might want to watch. Uh, click my face here if you want to subscribe to this channel. And uh, these post bag videos are supported by the very generous donations of my Patreon patrons. Thanks, Patreon patrons! Uh, click here if you'd like to become a donator. Cheerio!